I'm walking you through the process of painting these rhododendron blooms. I'm working on a gessoed panel that is lightly toned with burnt umber. I've wiped off that tone for the most part and let it dry before proceeding with drawing with vine charcoal. You can see I come straight out of the gates by trying to conceptualize these blooms in the simplest way possible, which are like two rather large gumdrop-like forms. One is facing slightly toward us, as is the case with the bottom one, the other facing slightly away so that you can see a little bit of the bottom plane of that mass of blooms. And I'm going to repeat uh, the drawing process because with this time lapse, the process is sort of blown through. But I wanted to show also my concern for dividing these large blooms into their component blossoms. Uh, azaleas from a distance look like an indistinguishable mass of frilly pink, but one thing that I find beautiful about them is the individual azalea-like blooms, and you can see that I'm trying to delineate those flowers pr pretty early on and try and maintain that, so it almost looks like uh, the seams on a turtle shell uh, or a soccer ball. And when I begin blocking in with paint, these delineations are rather quickly lost, but I wanted to make clear that I wanted to at least keep a ghost of a reference for where these individual blooms were, try to keep it constantly in my mind, and go out of my way to illustrate the distinctions between the flowers and not have it devolve into a big, big frilly balls. One of the particular difficulties of painting flowers is that we tend to only see their local color, and they manifest strong local color. These rhododendrons are very pink. However, if I were to depict it using just shades of that local color, it would end up looking a bit cartoonish, not terribly sophisticated, and just generally wouldn't feel like it's capturing the whole story. And so I'm trying to be attuned to where those flowers depart from the local color. For instance, where the pinks lean in places toward the cool end of the spectrum, toward blue and therefore purple, or where they subtly lean warm. And I can introduce a little bit of India yellow or cad red to warm up those pinks. Another unique difficulty of painting flowers and plants is that they tend to be translucent, especially petals. And where on a more opaque object like an apple, you might get really strong shadow shapes and uh, shadow values, the light passes through petals and you won't get the very rich, dark, satisfying shadows that you would on an opaque object. When the light shines through petals, I think of it as a stained glass effect, where oftentimes the local color of the subject manifests the most. So there are areas on this where the light is shining through the petals and it turns this very intense pink or reddish pink. There are also petals that face, based on their orientation in space, up toward the light and become essentially mirrors for the light source. This is in my Northlit studio on an overcast day, so the light was a little cool and bluish. You can definitely see in the closest two leaves, those waxy, magnolia-like leaves, they get rather blue. And that same effect is happening on petals that are oriented the same way in space. They become almost mirror-like reflections of the light source, which is cool. I've moved to the second sitting on this painting. The first one is, was primarily concerned with a block-in. By that I mean getting the most general characteristics of the setup, um, trying to get the impression that there are these two large forms in space being hit by a certain type of light from a certain direction. And once I get that close enough, then I give myself permission to go into the specifics of the subject. So I said in the beginning that I wanted to capture the feeling of the individual blossoms rather than large frilly balls. And I'm going in now and putting 
tighter, more specific chops of paint down, trying to illustrate these moments of specificity. The idea being that if I mix up just the right color with the right value, and I put that mark down in just the right place, then that part might be finished. It might be resolved. Now, it's never perfect, but it might be good enough. And so in that sense, I am going for finish. Flowers are, to the touch, rather soft. And so my tendency early on was to, therefore, blend out and soften edges and flowers, where I found it's rather counterintuitive, but oftentimes petals and leaves have a sharp visual appearance. They are like little blades that protrude into space. And so I've started using oftentimes flat brushes, synthetics and soft brushes to lay down a sharp mark to indicate a petal or leaf and leave it alone. And so what I'm concerned about, especially in these closing stages of a painting, are the interplay between relatively hard and soft edges. And I find what gives the painting a sense of finish is those specific marks that are put down and left alone. This is a shot of my somewhat messy palette and some of the brushes that I used. So this painting ended up being 14 by 14 inches. I trimmed down the panel at a certain point in the process. It took two sittings. The first sitting was roughly an hour and a half. And the second sitting, I came back to an underpainting that was dry in places. It was tacky in places, still totally wet in others. But I spent another four or five hours the second day getting into the specifics of these flowers. And the second day, I almost approached it like a botanical illustrator. So I was very attuned to the subtlety, subtleties of that, these particular flowers, in essence, doing a, a portrait of these individual flowers. And the danger of getting into this minutia is that you sometimes lose some of the impact or the vibrancy of the first sitting. So I'm always very weary um, when I get lost in detail, especially in the later stages, that I don't lose that. So I hope this has been a helpful example of how I would approach. It's not quite an a la prima painting because it took two sittings, but I still consider it um, a pretty direct painting done in two sittings from direct observation of these flowers, which served their purpose. They made it barely across the finishing line, as you can see.